Yo, what's going on guys, I'm Sam, and this is your first look at iOS 13. In this video, I wanna show you guys over 50 new hidden features and changes, and some other obvious stuff that I just think is super cool that you should definitely know about. So if you're excited for that, drop a like down below, it always helps me out, and hit subscribe so you don't miss out on any future videos. Now let's go ahead and get started. All right, so starting off here with iOS 13, you can now select Wi-Fi and Bluetooth devices or routers straight from Control Center, which you always had to do through the settings app before. So just head over to Control Center, 3D touch or long press on this box right here with like airplane mode, cellular data and all that stuff. You might not even know about this menu, but now when you 3D touch or long press on Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, check out what happens. You can actually browse through Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Now, while also in Control Center, this one's pretty obvious, but in case you didn't know already, you can enable dark mode from the settings app, but if you wanna do it quicker and easier, head over to Control Center, 3D touch or long press on the brightness section, and in the bottom left-hand corner of your screen, take a look what you got, appearance dark, or appearance light. Taking a look at the home screen in iOS 13, you'll notice that while most of the icons did not get a redesign, which I was personally disappointed about, I really wanted to see that whole like entire UI refresh. We saw a lot of big UI changes, but no new icons. There are some tweaks to existing icons. So Find My Friends and Find My iPhone have now been combined into one single app called Find My. You can check out the really fresh looking icon for that right here. However, existing apps, Reminders got a big update. Looks like this now. So the the icon has been tweaked. It's like a very similar icon design, but the colors are a little bit different. And then also this one, I mean, contacts didn't really change that much at all, except for, well, you can add a new relationship status now for some of your contacts. If you ever touched that feature before, that is brand new and sort of hidden in iOS 13. But the icon shows just like one singular person now rather than two people. And uh, I don't really know why Apple changed that one, considering there's no major change within the app. Moving over to the Messages app, everybody's two favorite features got some big changes here. First off, an emoji in emoji, there is a brand new sticker section. Now you might be saying, hey, I don't have an iPhone 10 or 10s or 10R. Why is this on my device? Well, that's because Apple has added some functionality of an emoji and emoji for everyone to the point where you now have these sort of like pre-made automated stickers you can send if you, I don't know, want to ruin every conversation you've ever started. I don't like these at all, but you know, maybe there's a market for them after all. Where the fun really starts, uh, the only part I can sort of tolerate here, there are new Animoji and tons of new Memoji features. So Animoji wise, you got this mouse, feel like you're staring at me a little bit too hard, like it's sort of cute, but I don't know, mice are also kind of disgusting creatures. Octopus dude, it's cute again, but those tentacles are getting a little bit too close to me. Uh, and then you got cow, if you've ever said wow. I wanna be a cow in an emoji form with Memoji. There, if you didn't think there were enough options before, there are so many more options now. There's like makeup options, I think. There are new stuff uh, for like eyewear, headwear. Like there's so much to choose from now. In case you were ever bored, uh, you can not be bored ever again with all the new options in iOS 13. Next up inside camera, it doesn't appear that this feature is out just yet, but there's a new high key mono portrait lighting mode. And then this next one is totally the future of photography, being able to change lighting of a portrait mode effect in post. So you can adjust the intensity of lighting as if you were almost moving a light physically closer to someone, which is totally crazy. I wish it could go hands-on, but it doesn't seem to be in beta one on my iPhone yet. Moving on to photos, there have been so many changes inside of this app from the entire UI being overhauled to a new share sheet, but I want to focus on photo search first. Uh, it looks a lot better. It looks a lot nicer. And I also feel like it works more accurately. There's also algorithms now that will be smart enough to try to predict what you want, uh, like just showing it to you right off the bat in the search panel in photos, which is pretty neat. Now this one's a big one. You know how you can edit photos in the Photos app? Well, what about videos? You actually couldn't really do much with video editing in the Photos app. Now you can. You can apply filters, you can apply effects to videos. You can also, this is probably the most useful feature of them all, rotate video inside of the Photos app. Now moving on to text input, it doesn't look like off the bat there have been any changes in iOS 13 because largely it looks the same, but there have been some really big ones. First off, text selection was driving me crazy. I'm so used to double tapping on a word to copy or paste it. Now you tap and hold 
and then you drag to like select a sentence uh, like that. And then if you wanna move it, you can copy and paste it from there. But the keyboard, guys, the keyboard's where one of the biggest changes ever has happened. And I feel like Apple didn't really highlight it that well. You can now swipe to type, like on Android, like on every other mobile device pretty much ever created. Okay, what about like undoing text? That's a pretty key part of an iPhone or a Mac or a PC. Like you're gonna mess up at some point. Well, previously you had to shake your phone. That was super archaic. Now that we have this, in iOS 13, you just double tap twice on the screen with three fingers to undo your most recent action. Yeah, it's, it's that easy now to undo. And also while we're on the topic of the keyboard, there are now separate dedicated emoji and globe buttons. So if you use multiple keyboards, you speak multiple languages and you switch between them frequently, it will no longer be annoying if you wanna use emojis and like also switch keyboards frequently. So that's really, really cool to see here on the iPhone. Moving on to the mail app, it actually got some pretty nice upgrades here. You can block senders now, which is fantastic. In addition to muting, specific threads. So if there's certain threads that are always popping off during the day or night, you can sort of put that on do not disturb now and sleep or rest peacefully. Next up, you remember that really obtrusive volume heads up display that would always go in the very center of your screen? That is now finally gone. They redesigned it so it's really nice. It goes on the left side of your display just like this. Shows you the full volume at first. As you continue to adjust it, it goes extremely like slim mode on us. And yeah, I mean, we've wanted this forever and it's finally here inside of iOS 13. Same thing for the mute switch now. Again, it used to take up our entire display. Why did it do that? No one will ever know. It now slides down, at least on the iPhone 10, from the very top with this amazing animation. Inside of the Reminders app in iOS 13, you get a pretty big visual overhaul, but you also have the ability now to change certain uh, looks of the app. Not a ton of customization, but if you tap on edit in the top right-hand corner on this screen, sort of the like most zoomed out view, then you tap on this eye icon next to your My List name, you can change the color of list. Going right alongside the Reminders app are some new features inside of Notes. So there's new checklist options inside of Notes, which is pretty cool. You can customize those now. There's view only collaboration. So if you wanna share a note with somebody, but not have or not give them access to edit it, you can also do that in the brand new version of Notes. And also folder management is finally in Notes. So you can easily sort through things much better than you could before. There's a brand new option to enable large app downloads on cellular. So if you ever were upset that you couldn't download an app while you were off Wi-Fi, even if you had an unlimited data plan, that's fixed now and there's a toggle just for you. Apple News Plus, Apple's new subscription service is expanding outside of the US even further in iOS 13. There is now going to be support for the United Kingdom as well as Australia. Now out of all the features we've talked about so far, probably taking the top of the list for most interesting is optimized battery charging. So heading over to the battery preference panel and then battery health, you'll see there's a new option here. It says to reduce battery aging, iPhone learns from your daily charging routine so it can wait to finish charging past 80% until you need to use it. If you want to turn it off, you can. It's just not recommended, but that's pretty cool. Apple through software has hopefully made our batteries degrade more properly, or at least slower than they did historically. That's incredible. Following that, font management is here in iOS 13. When it drops this fall, you'll be able to download fonts, not from online, but straight from the App Store through partners like Adobe. Apple has somehow managed to finesse that into iOS 13 as well. So if you do any font or graphic design work, it's a big update. Next up, there is a new low data mode coming to iOS 13. Again, it doesn't appear to be present right now, but when enabled, it will allow you to much more efficiently manage your data if let's say you don't have unlimited data and you're tired of going over time and time again. Now for Apple, the iPad was a major focus for iOS 13 uh, because it's actually not running iOS 13. In fact, the iPad now runs iPad OS, so it's called iPad OS 13, and the feature set on the iPad is totally out of this world. There are so many changes here. I'm only gonna highlight a few in this video, but first up, uh, for text selection, again, you do the same gesture you do on the iPhone where you like tap and hold the drag. But if you wanna copy and paste, this one's really cool. You do a three finger pinch to copy, and then a three finger pinch or like out pinch to paste now, which is super handy. Also on the iPad, undo and redo are a little bit different. So to undo something with three fingers, swipe left on the display and to redo something, you wanna swipe right with three fingers. If you use Apple Pencil on the iPad, I don't know how they've done it, but they brought the latency down, which was already like the best in the industry from 20 milliseconds, not even in half, 
but over in half to nine millisecond latency now for the Apple Pencil. It is even more responsive than it ever was before. And again, like I don't know how Apple did this with the software update. Perhaps the biggest update, aside from the, I don't know, sort of tweaked home screen on the iPad, it is definitely being able to use your iPad on iPad OS 13 with a Mac. With the newest version of Mac OS, you can now, uh, it's called Sidecar, use your iPad as an external display. And uh, I mean, there's not much else to say other than, yeah, that's pretty dope. And of course, we couldn't forget mouse support. Uh, on top of everything else that Apple's done, mouse support now works. Here's a video of it in action. You have to add it through accessibility, touch, and then assistive touch, cursor, and then you can add a Bluetooth or USB mouse, and it works just like you think it would. Inside of books, there are now reading goals, so if you wanna motivate yourself to read, you can do that in iOS 13. I mean, I don't know, books are pretty cool, maybe this will help me read more. Now, interestingly enough, there's also some specific features for AirPods in iOS 13. Again, didn't think these would be coming out with like the current hardware version, but you can now instantly reply to text using AirPods because Siri will now instantly read you text and without even having to like interact with anything else, if you want to reply, just say, hey, tell uh, Kat this or tell John this. Like you can say whatever and it, Siri will just send the text to them seamlessly as you have your AirPods in. The second AirPods feature is out of this world. If you and a friend both have AirPods, you can pair both of them to one iPhone. So Bluetooth audio splitting is finally here in this form and you and your buddy could share audio now uh, from one iPhone and you can enjoy it together in full volume rather than having to turn up your iPhone speakers. Uh, how they did this through an update again, I'm not really sure, but it's magical. Moving on to Siri and iOS 13, the voice is entirely new. So rather than being generated by a human, uh, like Susan Bennett was the original Siri actor, it is now entirely generated through AI. Uh, so a computer voice is what it, we're hearing now in iOS 13. Shorter wavelength blue light is more strongly scattered in the Earth's atmosphere than longer wavelength red light. Shorter wavelength blue light is more strongly scattered in the Earth's atmosphere than longer wavelength red light. And it sounds more natural, the cadence is better, it doesn't sound like it is rushing wor words together like really weird, it just feels natural. And pretty soon you'll also be able to have 100,000 local radio stations in your pocket just by asking Siri to play your favorite local radio. Inside of the Maps app, you can now add collections, which is pretty cool. So you can add a new collection of places. For example, like if you wanted to go on a road trip, you could sort of like add them all to this area and then just go down the list for places you wanted to stop and uh, basically go from place to place really easily. Also being able to add a photo to these is pretty cool so you can organize them visually. Also inside of the Maps app, there's a better report a problem. So if you ever run into an issue where Maps is just genuinely wrong at iOS 6, the entire release, then you could report that more easily. But what you wanna see is street view. So Google's had this since I feel like I've been alive since 1998. But the zooming is pretty cool on the Apple Maps version, and it's just another step towards Apple being, you know, at least somewhat close to Google Maps, even though Google Maps is generally better. You now have street view, so you can look around, which is pretty cool. When you create a calendar event in iOS 13, while the app overall looks as boring as it always has, you can now add attachments if you want to specifically, you know, mesh something together with a specific event and calendar. Now, Apple didn't talk about this one at all, totally hidden uh, from public view, but you can now use PS4 or Xbox One S control controllers on your iPhone and I cannot wait to try that one out to actually pair a controller over Bluetooth. Inside of the health app, there is a new hearing tab right here that allows you to see an audiogram, environmental sound levels, uh, and because it's only day one for iOS 13, I haven't been able to use it a lot, but it's actually gonna be able to tell you like if you've been experiencing permanent hearing loss or if you're in loud environments all the time, what impact that could have. And there's also some performance upgrades in iOS 13, which I'm incredibly happy to put to the test. I'm gonna make a video on that very soon. Uh, there's some big stuff here. So faster app launch, apps can launch up to twice as fast in iOS 13. Face ID on iPhone 10, 10R, 10S Max is up to 30% faster. Uh, so on any iPhone 10 style device, it's up to 30% faster, unlocking, getting into your phone, hopefully making it closer to as quick as it is with Touch ID. There's also smaller app downloads. Apple's making them up to 50% smaller and app updates up to 60% smaller whenever iOS 13 comes out and the new app store is you know, packaged in a way that it makes the update smaller. And while we're talking about the app store, if you were wondering where in the world the updates tab went, if you wanted to manually update your apps, it's really like hard to find now. You have to go in the top right hand corner of the screen. There's gonna be a badge if you have updates over your like 
iCloud profile icon. And then once you're there, scroll down a little bit and you'll see everything. But yeah, kind of confusing how like search just took over the updates tab. And the last thing that I've enjoyed so far in iOS 13 is that there is a new start page in Safari, not hidden at all, but a good way to end the video just to show you that Apple has updated nearly every part of the operating system. And I guarantee as more and more changes come out, I will be doing a part two of this video. So if you want to see that, make sure to drop a like down below. And of course, hit subscribe so you don't miss out on that as soon as it drops. Alongside all my other videos, I still have planned for iOS 13 because there is a ton in the pipeline. That's all for this video. If you enjoyed it, drop a like, hit subscribe for more. I've been Sam, and I'll catch you all in the next one.